Hey, fish people, welcome back to the channel. So today, we're gonna do a little care guide on your beta has a tumor. I adopted slash rescued, more adopted than anything, some not so healthy low beta guys. These were fish that slowly developed tumors, so I took six and I had to learn, you know, how to take care of them. So I'm going to show you how you can take care of a tumor beta if you decide that you are in a position where you can adopt. So hopefully this is educational and you learn a little something about how to take care of a fish that has a tumor, specifically beta fish. All right, so first off, you're gonna most likely wanna keep your fish by itself. My aunt's a vet and I asked her at one point about tumors in tropical fish like betas. And she told me that most of the time they're a viral infection and that the tumor can rupture and then cause your other fish to also get sick. So I'm gonna say your first thing you wanna do is just keep these guys by themselves. And that way it doesn't run the risk of your other fish getting infected if that is a thing. It's been a while since she's on tropical fish though, so I don't know if that's entirely true. Next up, since the tumor is going to be extremely stressful on the fish, you're gonna to wanna to add things like botanicals to your tank. You can get these online, they're leaves. You can order them on eBay, on Amazon, on your local fish store websites. They're now all over my desk. But yeah, these will release tannins into the water. Katapa leaf and Indianama leaves are the most common leaves you're gonna find. These are gonna release tannins into the water, which are a natural kind of like mellowing thing that's gonna help your fish relax and calm down. You could also use certain treatments for your water when you do water changes that have aloe in them. I personally use API Stress Coat with my fish because it has aloe in it, which helps with their slime coat, which helps reduce their stress. Another thing that's gonna be similar to another beta guard is gonna be temperature. You're gonna keep the guys nice and warm, 78 to 80, 82, around that range. They're gonna want a nice warm, keeps them nice and calm when they're warm. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is a nice high quality food. Um, one of the causes that can create tumors in betas is lower quality foods that don't have the best ingredients in them, along with genetics. It's usually a genetic thing that will help form the tumor. But if you give the fish a not so good food, it can contribute or be a contributing factor towards that tumor. So you wanna give them something nice and rich and high in protein. And just make sure check your ingredients, make sure that the first few ingredients on there aren't, you know, fish meal and corn. So what do I mean by a lower quality food? I have three fish foods in front of me. Uh, the first one, I'm just gonna read the ingredients. The first ingredient in this one, which would be, you know, a lower end food, but is a common food in the hobby. So we got fish meal, dried yeast, ground brown rice, and then we finally get to some shrimp meal and dried fish protein. So this one would be on the lower end. There are things that are probably worse than that. We'll go to food number two here. This food, the first ingredient is krill meal, shrimp meal, squid meal. So those are some better things right there. Last one I have here, and again, not gonna show you what these are just because if I could get this open, sorry about the noise, this one you're gonna know what it is because it's the first ingredient, but it's black soldier fly larva, salmon, fish protein concentrate, shrimp meal. So those are the first ones in this. So if you compare those three, first one, we instantly started out with fish meal and dried yeast and starches and stuff like that, which are gonna be lower quality. So look for stuff that's higher quality ingredients. Same thing with like dog and cat food. Look at the ingredient list, make sure it's not like processed, separated stuff. Look for the stuff that's got that better stuff to start off the bat for your food. Now, tank size, if you're only gonna, you know, keep the one, five gallon is probably the ideal size for these. If you have a beta with a tumor that's got much longer flowing fins, like a full moon or a half moon, those you're gonna wanna keep in a smaller tank anyway because they get really tired from swimming with all their fins all the time. If you have a beta fish that's got a tumor and it's, you know, like a half moon placot or a placot, you can probably get away with a 10 gallon, but again, you're gonna be most likely keeping it by itself, except for maybe some snails. So five gallon is probably the tank size you're gonna to wanna to keep these in. If you guys have been here any length of time, you know that I love putting plants in tanks. 
uh, because this would be just a five gallon tank Anubius get bunched like three or four Anubius plants put those in that tank those are also gonna you know as we mentioned before give the fish hiding places which they're gonna like because they can get out of line of sight and Anubiuses are super easy to take care of so if you want to get plants for your tumor beta go with Anubius they're nice plants they can sleep on the leaves it's gonna work out great now this next thing is gonna be it's gonna sound bad because if you you also know that I don't like to give up on a fish but if you notice that the tumor is becoming too much of a hindrance on the fish and they're becoming less active they're not eating as much they're not swimming around as much they can't get up and move like they were before you might want to consider you know humanely disposing of them whether that is taking them to a vet or doing it yourself at home personally I would rather take them to a vet and let them do it because I don't have these things at home to do that but again that's the last resort like when the fish gets to that point just like when humans get to that point with a cancer or a tumor where it becomes so exhausting on them that they're in pain it's just the humane thing to do would be to get rid of the fish the proper way but I'm always an advocate for try and heal them first but unfortunately with tumors there's really not a treatment it's more of a quality of life make them comfortable spoil the crud out of them love the fish as much as you can the biggest difference between keeping a healthy beta without a tumor and one that has a tumor is you really have to be on top of your water quality if the water gets too nasty for your fish usually if it's a healthy fish without a tumor you know you do your water change you do your course correct and the fish is fine unfortunately because of the fish having a tumor already if the water quality goes from good to bad or even fair to bad the fish it's going to be more stressful on the fish than it would for healthy fish so you really need to keep on top of your water quality now again if you guys have been here you know i don't typically do many water changes on my tanks i have so many plants in them i let them go with these tumor betas I've been doing weekly water changes of at least half the water <clears throat> and you know then I go in with the API stress coat and make sure that they have clean fresh water all the time just because you really want to make sure your water is as clean as possible for them like you probably don't want your nitrates to get past five parts per million just because that will slowly wear on the fish and it's already not a healthy fish because it has a tumor so do your best to keep the water quality as clean as you can keep it without, you know, it becoming a full-time job. Um, I don't recommend anybody taking any sickly tumor betas if you can't commit at least one day a week to maintain their tank. Just because it is like having a sick person living with you, it takes a lot of time and dedication to make sure that their living conditions are right and that they're still feeding eating and that they're still you know active enough to take care of themselves and be healthy so if you can't commit at least one day a week to tank maintenance um you probably shouldn't consider adopting these so that's this week's video thank you guys so much for watching please remember to like comment subscribe if you aren't subscribed already and you know, I have to say a big thank you. We hit 1K. We're staying above 1K. So thank you guys all so much for the support you've been providing me. I hope you continue to enjoy the content and videos and live stream form that I'm putting out. And that we just, you know, grow a community here. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, evening, morning, whatever time of day is you're watching this. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace, y'all.